RX Sugar sent me samples to my office and here's why I'm probably not keeping them in my office, but you might want to. Let's begin by saying why I'm so excited about what allulose and this company, RX Sugar, has to do with the landscape of sugar substitute options. To be specific, allulose is actually a rare sugar, meaning it is a natural sugar, it's just not naturally found this abundant in food. There's a lot of information about how allulose stimulates the production and and the increase in GLP-1. Now, GLP-1 is that hormone that, yeah, Ozempic and those other weight loss drugs are making superhuman, really high in patients. And the effect on their food choices and their eating patterns is profound. The addiction to food, which is real, is not the only thing that gets reversed when these patients go on Ozempic. They stop smoking, they stop drinking, they stop binge eating, and it's a profound change in behavior, which is the core for people losing weight and sustaining it. It's just that when it's chemically induced by this super natural level of GLP-1, well, I've not been on board with that. When you use allulose, it appears that there's a more natural rise and fall of GLP-1 in animals. Well, let's take a look at this mouse study. This article came out in 2018 in Nature Communications, and they're looking at what happens when you add allulose to mice and its effect on this GLP-1. So let's dial in to show you what happened when these mice were given one gram per kilogram of body weight of allulose. The substitute is used in RX sugar. It was compared to saline in the mice as well. You can see there is a nice natural rise of GLP-1 with this dosing in the mice. If I was giving them Ozempic, I, I think it would go off the charts. <laughs> it would be higher than, than we can map on here, and it would stay for a week. It wouldn't rise and fall with eating like this is doing. I really like this schematic, which shows when these mice consumed the oral allulose, it increased the GLP-1 that comes from that first section in the colon. I remind patients that in order to produce this, you do need polyphenols in your gut in order to produce that. That's part of the substrate needed for your body to make this hormone. What happens next after you make GLP-1 is a strong message into the brain that says, hey, I don't wanna eat. I uh, don't feel the need for more consumption, but it also is coming with the ability to tolerate glucose better. And that is what is remarkable to me because so many of my patients suffer from this. As you look at the anti-arrhythmic overeating, that is a lovely way to say, people who binge, people who get obsessed with food, it is decreasing their obesity and decreasing their diabetes. Yesterday, the company RX Sugar had sent me some samples and I decided I'm gonna try this in my own life before I talk about it with patients. So I know better than to not prime my gut with polyphenols if you're gonna ask it to make GLP-1. Most people get polyphenols by eating vegetables, something I don't do. I put them in by using uh, algae because it's convenient and easy and something I can do right before I leave the office if I'm headed to supper. So I headed out, had those polyphenols and then I started to eat the RX sugar bar. Now, for starters, it tasted great. It is awesome. So I was pretty impressed. My palate said, this tastes fine. I even uh, tortured my husband and said, I need you to taste this. So he had half of each of the bars that I tried. I tried the mint and I tried the chocolate and it really tasted good. I swallowed water as I did it, and I was wearing my continuous glucose monitor. So let's take a look at what it did to my sugar. So this was a pretty normal day for me. I got up, I had a couple of bites of eggs, I had my coffee in the morning, and then I continued to do my day. And when I left the office, I was about right here. And again, blood sugar in the triple digits, which is something I don't like, but I swallowed my polyphenols and then I started to eat this bar. And by golly, my blood sugars did go down after eating it. Like, kind of remarkable. I went to bed and I was probably in bed by about 10 o'clock, uh, 9.30, 10 o'clock. And I'll tell you, I did not sleep that well. I feel so swollen today. Like, it was a pretty clean food day for me. I had this experiment, but I did not do anything outside of water and salt and coffee and eggs and then this RX sugar bar.
and I feel swollen. I feel like the bags under my eyes are definitely worse. And I have evidence that when I feel like this, when I feel like everything is tight, I don't feel good. Check out my shin thumbprint. This is one of the things I teach patients. You want to know if you're retaining water, if you want to know if you're swollen, here's the first thing that goes wrong in folks. So as I am looking at that compression under on my shin bone for 30 seconds, check this out. Plenty of swelling there. That was not there yesterday. I don't check my blood pressure every day, it's been normal. But if you have blood pressure problems and this is the kind of fluctuation you're getting in your interstitial area, I guarantee that your circulating volume is increased. Translation, your blood pressure is higher. That is not something I want patients to deal with. Now, the real question is, would this have been worse if my blood sugar would have spiked. Well, I can tell you from experience, I have done that. I have had real sugar treats. It spikes my sugar. I don't usually sleep well the nights that it does that. And I get swelling the next day. This influx of sugar in somebody who's been insulin resistant is, well, it's disastrous. The stage that I'm at in my recovery from being addicted to sugar is that I really keep it out of my house. I keep it out of my temptation zone and I am fine. I get through those moments where I want for things that I used to want for because they aren't near me. So if that RX sugar bar is in my office, it tasted great and it did not spike my blood sugar. So I'm sure I'll eat it, but I do not like how I feel the day after. So if you're at the stage where you are trying to say no to the temptations of sugar, but you get to the aisle where you're checking your groceries out and you want the sugar and then you buy it, this is a way better option than that. But if you're at the stage that I'm at, where I really don't do that anymore, I really have broken my bad habit of doing that. But if you put this near me, it's good. I would probably eat it. And I don't like how I feel the next day. So here's my real question. Why do I feel badly? I mean, my sugars didn't go up. I wasn't that bad in my choices. Why do I feel so rotten? If you think you know the answer, put it in the comments below. We are watching your answers and I'm curious. What do you think happened?